just, just looking for your initial response to that uh, inflation rate. Uh, it's down 3.4 to 3.2, but, you know, only by 0.2%. Yeah, well, I mean, I'm hearing this news as you're hearing it, um, and clearly any drop uh, is is welcome. But we know, and as your commentator said there, that this is not uh, good news being felt in people's pockets. We know that everyone coming up to remortgage their home is paying, on average, uh, you know, way more than they would if we hadn't had that disastrous mini budget a couple of years ago and um, and we know that people are really struggling so and it's still below um, expectations as well so I think uh, whilst any news is good news there's still a long way to go before people start feeling better and this country starts turning around because really it's years of chaos that is holding this country back uh, in terms of our economy in terms of economic growth in terms of people's stability and security and ability to get on and build their lives um, we got the uh, figures in yesterday for economic in inactivity and an increase in the number of people who aren't working, one-fifth now of the British population. We've seen unemployment uh, rise and, as you say, inflation coming down uh, more slowly than perhaps lots of people were hoping. How would any of that be different under a Labour administration? Because a lot of the challenges, certainly in relation to inflation, as Liam was explaining, to do with geopolitics. Not a lot you can do in Westminster, is there? Well, I think there's an awful lot we can do as a country to turn this country around after 14 years of, quite frankly, quite failing and chaotic government. I mean, I've been elected since 2010 and it's been a litany of failures as far as I can see. And I think the voters can see that too. We need a general election as soon as possible because, quite frankly, the country needs stable government. And that's what we don't have. We saw even yesterday on a matter such as smoking, the current government can't even come together and decide and had to have a free vote. So um, appreciate this is a much longer discussion about our economy and how we rebuild it. And obviously Labour has a lot of good ideas, a lot of proposals, a lot of things that we're itching to get into government and to implement to really kickstart our economy and, and ensure we have that growth in every part of our country. But whilst we're clinging on to this current government, um, we're just going to keep going backwards. Now, Catherine, one of these ideas that, that Labour has is... Um, mental health support in schools and you want that mental health support there in in every school and I'm not saying whether it should or shouldn't be there there's certainly a huge awareness now uh, amongst children amongst parents amongst school teachers that they need that extra support but that support costs how are you going to pay for that so you're absolutely right. It is a priority for us. We see a real crisis in the mental health of our young people, and I think your viewers do too. We know that there are almost half a million children waiting to see someone about their mental health. It's just appalling. It's a scandal, and it's, it's brewing up problems for the long term as well. So Labour would prioritise this, and we would pay for it by removing the tax exemptions that private schools currently enjoy. We appreciate everybody's uh, you know, facing challenges in terms of the economy and the mismanagement by the government, but ultimately our priority would be putting that money, which we would raise, 1.3 to 1.5 billion, that's been independently verified, and we would put that into our schools uh, for more teachers, but particularly as well for mental health support, a mental health specialist advisor in every secondary school. And we also invest in community hubs as well to make sure that children can get that support where they need it and where they want to access it. And we'd make sure we would um, cut down these CAMS waiting lists as well, but those are health initiatives. Um, and so, but in terms of our education system, our state schools desperately need this boost and our young people desperately need this mental health support and Labour has a plan, a clear plan, costed mm. to deliver it. It's a strange way of doing it though, isn't it? Because essentially what you're doing by increasing taxes on private school is forcing a huge number of pupils that aren't taking up their places that are paid for by the state back into the state sector. At the moment that's money that the state isn't having to spend. A whole bunch of children won't be able to afford these increased fees and those kids will then be swamping the state sector. I think it's a bit divisive to say that mental health is being prioritised ahead of this. A lot of children should be getting mental health provision irrespective of taxation and private schools. So 
Absolutely. It, it, it has been a priority for us and it's why we've made this decision. Um, I do think government is about um, taking decisions and choosing our priorities. Um, but ultimately, in terms of private schools, it, it is a tax break that they currently enjoy and that we think that public money should mm. be spent in our state schools why where 9 out of 10 children that? are educated that taxation to the private health sector though because you're only going after education which predominantly affects well only affects young people but you, you, you're actually saying we're streeting is saying we're not going to add VAT onto private health and that's something that tends to affect largely people needing the NHS people of older years is this discriminatory actually against younger people so this is very much focused on our education system. We know that nine out of 10 children are educated in the state sector. And let's bear in mind as well that private schools have increased their fees above inflation over the last uh, 10 years. There's been no decrease in the number of children attending uh, private schools, but we have seen a massive decrease in that support and funding. No, but you're not answering that goes my question about, state about private schools, And the gap health. has really What's grown different? between the funding. Uh, well, I mean, it's a much uh, a different proposition in terms of private health. But we are not we are not against people making choices about how they educate their children or indeed how they spend their money and how they <coughs> choose to live. What we are making decisions around is how mm. the taxpayers' money is targeted in our system. And that's a decision that we've taken that the state school sector, we have a shortage of teachers, we have a crisis in mental health, we have mm. uh, real challenges in our school system. System. And if we want to build that economy of the future, which I said, Labour is really ambitious for this country and really turning around the economic situation that we see, then we have to invest in our children in order to build that better future for everybody. Catherine, if you were spending taxpayers' money in Belgium, um, all the situation in, in, in Brussels at this NatCon conference, would you have spent it on sending the police in to um, break up the, the conference? Good, good pivot there. Um, I, in terms of policing decisions in Brussels, obviously that's an operational matter for the police and I wouldn't expect people in Brussels to comment on operational policing decisions that are taken here in the UK. Um, but I, I do think there are some concerning aspects to what happened yesterday um, and I think Rishi Sunak has some questions to answer about his mm. own MPs and, and who they're associating with. And obviously, you know, there, there are issues of freedom of speech, freedom of association, all of that Labour absolutely supports. But you've got to question whether Rishi Sunak, as the Prime Minister, should be comfortable with his MP, Suella Braverman, who was down to speak and share a platform mm. with some highly divisive figures uh, who, who were going to be there on that platform at that event in Brussels yesterday. So I think it's an an operational matter for the Brussels police, but I think Rishi Sunak has some answers, uh, questions to answer here in the UK. Catherine McKinnell will we'll have to leave it there.